Hello, this is Sebastian from Native Instruments. In this part of our controller manager video tutorials, we will explain how to map commands with the Native Instruments controller. If you wish to obtain an example for a third-party MIDI controller or get a general outlook on Tractor's controller manager, please consult the corresponding videos linked in the About section of this video. In this example, we will modify the existing default mapping of the Tractor Control X1 MK2 controller in order to map the commands of Tractor's loop recorder. To begin, make sure your controller is connected and recognized. Then click on Device and select the mapping for your Tractor Control device, which has been added automatically upon connection. You will see that the assignment table is empty. This is because our Tractor Control devices rely on an advanced protocol which cannot be represented in the assignment table. However, using the function override factory map, you will still be able to fully customize the default mappings for most of our controllers. It allows you to replace the pre-configured assignments running in the background with customized assignments of your own. In our example, we will create an add-on mapping which allows us to use the features of Tractor's loop recorder. For this, we will override the default assignments of the sync buttons and map them to the loop recorder. With the aid of modifiers and the shift button, we will be able to load two separate functions to each button. Recording a loop as primary function and changing the size of the loop as secondary function, both mapped to the left sync button. Playing back the recorded loop as primary function and deleting the loop as secondary function, both mapped to the right sync button. Note that the sync button, like many controls of the X1, already has a secondary function assigned to it. In this case, the deck master. This assignment will also be overridden in the process. The first assignment will be record. Click on Add In and choose it from the list of loop recorder functions. Once it has been added, click Learn and press the left sync button on your controller. Now the assignment has taken effect. Since the record button acts as an on-off switch, we set the interaction mode to toggle. The assignment field in this case can only be set to global. For many other types of assignments, you would select a specific deck here. You may also leave it as device target. In this case, the assignment will apply to the deck that has been defined in the device target field of the device setup section. The override factory map option should remain ticked as we want to override the sync function of the default mapping. We will now create our next assignment by adding the function play pause and mapping it to the right sync button. Since this button also acts as an on-off switch, we again set the interaction mode to toggle. We proceed with the function called size. Size determines the length in bars for the audio material to be recorded. We will map it to the left sync button, same as we did with record, so that the sync button is now mapped to two different functions, creating a double mapping. By default, the interaction mode of size is set to ink, which means that the next available value is set for each press of the button. This way, we will be able to access all values of the size parameter from one button. Finally, we create an assignment for the function delete. Triggering delete will erase the recorded loop. We map this to the right sync button, thus creating our second double mapping, and leave the interaction mode as trigger. Note that if no material is buffered in the loop recorder, the delete function won't do anything. We have now mapped record and size to the left sync button and play pause and delete to the right sync button. In order to trigger these actions separately as primary and secondary functions, we need to create a modifier. The controller manager allows you to set up to eight different modifier assignments. Each assignment can hold up to two different conditions, which allow users to potentially create very complex mappings. This modifier assignment will be implemented by the use of the shift button. We will now add modifier number one and map it to the shift button. As we have now mapped all of our assignments, we turn off learn mode. 
For this assignment, we untick the override factory map option as the shift button is still responsible for a lot of operations in the default mapping. We want our secondary functions size and delete to apply only when the shift button is held down and therefore we set the interaction mode to hold. Conversely, the primary functions record and play pause will apply only when shift is not being pressed. Finally, under button options, we choose one under set to value. This means that the initial state of modifier number one is zero and while holding down shift, its state will be one. Now we want our secondary loop recorder assignments to react to the modifier number one. For this, we go back to the details of these assignments. We will start with size. Under modifier conditions, we choose M1, which represents our modifier number 1. We set value to 1. Now we do the same for the delete assignment. Finally, we set the value of M1 to 0 for the primary assignments, record and play pause. Now the primary functions will only react when shift is not pressed, so the modifier state is zero. The secondary functions will only react when it is pressed down, so the modifier state is one. We can now do an initial test of our mapping. First we hold down the shift button and take a look at the modifier state. The state of modifier number one is changing from zero to one, just as we want it to. Now, as we hold down shift and repeatedly press the left sync button, we are able to set the size of the loop. If we now hit the left sync button without holding down shift, the recording will start in the loop recorder. We briefly perform the same test for the right sync button to make sure that the modifier mapping has been successfully implemented. Now that we have all our input assignments set and functioning, we will assign our output assignments. An output assignment, in this case, enables visual feedback by controlling LEDs on the controller. The LED will light up when the corresponding assignment is triggered. To quickly create an output assignment, we select one of our input assignments. Next, we click the Add Out button. The first option will be the one matched to the input assignment we just selected. This is the correct choice. Now the output assignment has been created as shown in the assignment table. We repeat the same for the rest of the assignments except for modifier number one. You can now monitor the state of your mapped functions directly on your controller. For example, when we record a loop and then set it to play, the right sync button will remain lit for as long as the loop is playing. Note that all the changes made to your mapping are saved automatically. Once you are finished editing your mapping, you may also export it as a TSI file to create a backup or share it with your friends. You can do so by clicking on Edit, Export, and saving it to your hard drive. In the course of this video, we have learned how to modify the default mapping of a native instruments controller and how to work with the modifiers. Feel free to experiment with different modifier conditions and tweak the details of individual assignments to create unique ways to interact with the Tractor software interface. If you are using a third-party media controller instead, you can watch the corresponding video linked in the About section of this video. There, you will also find useful links to related articles in our knowledge base, as well as a video explaining the general concepts behind Tractor's Controller Manager.